media analysis in the first half of 2019 is going to focus on the coming general election in May. Will Narendra Modi return to power? Will Rahul Gandhi beat expectations and win? Will a third front government emerge as in 1996-98? Modi faced and defied challenges and he is at his best when the challenge is strong. Even during his time as CM, he faced challenges and tension after 2002 riots and every time he came out successful in spite of huge challenges mounted against him. Prior to 2014, there were many articles suggesting that Modi will fall short of majority, also because of geographical limitations, lack of allies and past precedent will ensure Modi falling short of majority but he came out successful surmounting all odds. The severance of alliance with Shiv Sena before 2014 was thought to be Modi's Waterloo in Maharashtra. But BJP became the largest party shot by 10 seats. BJP formed the government. It was believed that BJP cannot expand in unconventional areas or in areas where minorities are in majority. But BJP won in Northeast where Christians are in majority. It has poured into Tripura, a communist bastion. It is able to conquer Assam. The argument is that Modi has not failed in all this crux situation and he will not fail in 2019 also. Also, he has never failed as CM and will also not fail as PM. Economic growth alone will not produce victories. P.V. Narsimha Rao and A.B. Vajpayee failed to get a mandate in 1996 and 2004 respectively even though they gave overflowing treasury. Both failed though GDP growth was in double digits. Hence, economic growth alone will not decide the election. Vajpayee neglected Hindutva and Ram Janbhumi and went for India Shiny, which did not appeal to the grassroots workers. People are not motivated by unemployment but with Hindutva. The sentiments of Gauraksha can have overbearing experience in India but economy slowdown will pass as to be corrected for the future. Between secularism and Hindutva, 83% Indians in general prefer Hindutva and not the English word secularism. Hindutva appeals to people as empowerment. Modi is providing all these and people are all fascinated by these. All these should be sufficing to get elected again. All Pearl surveys have predicted Modi in the lead by miles followed by Rahul. Every survey gives Modi's acceptance ratings above 70%. Every survey also is giving NDA majority with BJP as the largest or with majority. Hence BJP will get the first call with its resources. It is in a position to form the government even if it falls short of few sheets. In 2014, BJP won 207 constituencies and secured a margin of more than 1 lakh votes. It is very difficult to defeat BJP in all these seats. To defeat BJP in these seats, there should be a swing of more than 10% which is impossible. This is possible only when there is huge public anger against the government. Since there is no such thing, it is impossible. Mahagathbandhan is the creation of an alliance of a set of weaklings who are unable to face Modi. There is no history where strong character has been defeated by a set of weak parties. Hence, Mahagathbandhan cannot defeat Modi. Some people are making comments that Modi has upset them. People who are making those comments are either middle class or short business class who are saving taxes. The tax component was their earning and now they have lost it. 
Now here comes data science. Pick up the data from rural India. How many families have benefited from the cooking gas and electricity? How many have got access to toilets and how many kids are going to school now? When we study this, we get a figure of 50 crore. Even in 40-50 crore, being a conservative, we divide it by 2. It is 20 crore. You know in 2014, the elections were won by a small margin of 1.4 crore and here you have a larger swing. So the calculation says 2019 belongs to Modi. While time will say who will win 2019 election, the signals of comeback are strong. What are your views? Please comment. We would review them in our next story on Modi. Keep watching.